In the Empire State, where the skylines are a tableau of modern architectural wonders echoing the beat of international finance, and the lush upstate landscapes sing a song of tranquility, a different yet equally fascinating treasure awaits, the well-preserved old money mansions of New York. These grand homes, stone and steel reminders of an earlier, more grandiose era, are tucked amongst our 21st century more functional commercial properties and apartment blocks. Now, unlike other states that either came into prominence too recently in America's history or face financial challenges, New York has nurtured its old money for centuries. This enduring affluence has allowed for the exceptional preservation of these historic residences, transforming them from mere structures to gateways into a luxurious past. In today's episode of Old Money Mansions, we'll explore these magnificent old money abodes, navigating through elegantly maintained corridors and journeying through history, as we describe. The top 10 must-see old money mansions in New York that you can visit today. Number 10. The William Payne Whitney Mansion, New York City. Nestled on the ever-so-chic Fifth Avenue in New York City, the Payne Whitney Mansion stands as a shining beacon of the Gilded Age, with its architecture masterminded by none other than Stanford White. This Beaux-Arts masterpiece, a generous gift from Colonel Oliver Hazard Payne to his nephew of the Whitney lineage in 1902, is the epitome of luxury and grandeur. Upon setting foot in this grey granite marvel, visitors are greeted by a majestic five-storey façade that effortlessly blends elegance with architectural finesse. And inside, the grand rotunda, possibly adorned with art linked to Michelangelo himself, sets the stage for opulence. Then there's the Venetian Room, a symbol of Helen Hay Whitney's impeccable taste, exuding sophistication in every corner. Now, this grand residence, once the playground of the Whitneys until the mid-20th century, experienced a brief stint as apartments before the French government swept in to write the next chapter in its storied history. Now, under the auspices of the cultural services of the French embassy, the building has been lovingly restored by the skilled hands of Atelier de Ricou, ensuring Stanford White's vision lives on. Currently, the mansion serves as the HQ for Villa Albertine, with the fifth-floor studio, once Mrs. Whitney's creative haven and the birthplace of her literary contributions to Harper's and the Metropolitan Magazine, continuing to inspire artists. Number 9. The Plant House, New York City. At the prestigious corner of 52nd Street and 5th Avenue in New York City, the Plant House stands as a resplendent example of American Renaissance architecture. Dreamed up in 1905 by architect C.P.H. Gilbert, this mansion was originally the urban palace of Morton Freeman Plant, offspring of railway magnate Henry B. Plant. Now, the building's facade presents a grand spectacle on both 52nd Street and 5th Avenue. Featuring an ornate pavilion on the 52nd Street side and a cleverly concealed attic within a frieze adorning both sides. The original grand entrance of the home opened onto 52nd Street, welcoming guests into a world of luxury. And inside, the plant house was nothing short of opulent, boasting a spacious dining room, a drawing room, and a cozy smoking annex on the ground floor. A library and music room on the second floor were linked by a grand circular staircase. And the east side of this floor housed plant's piano room, complete with a coffered ceiling, while the west side was the domain of Pierre C. Cartier's private offices. And this architectural jewel has seen various chapters in its history. In 1917, it transitioned from private mansion to the glittering world of high jewellery, becoming the flagship store of Cartier. Today, the entire building is dedicated to showcasing Cartier's luxurious jewellery and exquisite timepieces. Though not open for general public visits, the plant house, now a treasured New York City landmark, remains accessible to Cartier's clientele and those drawn to its offerings. Its architecture and storied past continue to enchant visitors and locals, standing as a proud icon of New York City's Gilded Age opulence. Number 8. The James B. Duke House, New York City. In the historic splendor of Manhattan's Upper East Side, the James B. Duke House at 1 East 78th Street stands as a beacon of early 20th century luxury and elegance. Originally built for the esteemed businessman James Buchanan Duke and his family, this mansion is a testament to wealth and exquisite taste. Constructed from 1909 to 1912, the mansion's architectural beauty was the vision of Horace Trumbauer, who was inspired by the Chateau Labotiere in Bordeaux, France. 
Its exterior, a classical display of rectilinear form with a two-story portico, is capped by a pediment and framed by distinct coins. And inside, visitors are enveloped in luxury, from the marble floors to the intricate mouldings and the majestic staircase. Each room is a study in timeless elegance, graced with antique furnishings, paintings, sculptures, and walls lined in silk and velvet, providing a lavish backdrop for a collection of rare books, manuscripts, and artistic treasures. Today, the James B. Duke House serves as the home of New York University's Institute of Fine Arts, maintaining its historic essence since 1959. As a center of academic and artistic study, it remains an integral part of the city's cultural landscape, preserving a rich heritage of art and design for future scholars and enthusiasts. Number 7. The Otto H. Kahn House, New York City. Bringing forth another location in the refined surroundings of Manhattan's Upper East Side, the Otto H. Kahn House at 1 East 91st Street exudes the lavishness of the Renaissance Revival style. Constructed between 1914 and 1918, this splendid mansion is a vivid reminder of the opulence and cultural richness of a bygone era. Otto Hermann Kahn, a prominent investment banker, envisioned this grand residence as a haven for his extensive library and art collection. Architects J. Armstrong Stenhouse and C.P.H. Gilbert brought this vision to life, drawing inspiration from the Palazzo della Cancelleria in Rome. Their creation, an excellent example of the Neo-Italian Renaissance style, emerged as one of America's largest private homes, boasting up to 80 rooms and accommodating 40 servants. Now the mansion's exterior presents a classical simplicity, featuring a rectilinear design with a recessed portico, and inside, a realm of grandeur awaits. Marble floors, elaborate moldings, and a stately staircase set the stage. Each room, arrayed with antique furniture and draped in silk and velvet, showcases a splendid array of rare books, manuscripts, drawings and prints. Currently, this architectural jewel functions as the convent of the Sacred Heart School, having preserved its history and heritage since 1940. While the mansion's interior remains a hidden gem, its exterior continues to embody the splendor and artistic flair of the past. As an icon of cultural significance, it stands at its prestigious address, its narrative silently beckoning to those who venture near. Number 6. The Benjamin N. Duke House, New York City. Yet another old money mansion located in the prestigious Upper East Side of Manhattan, we're beginning to see a pattern here at the intersection of 82nd Street and 5th Avenue stands the historic Benjamin N. Duke House, also known as the Duke Siemens Mansion. This architectural gem exemplifies Beaux-Arts design. Its striking red brick structure, complemented by a limestone facade, spans a grand 20,000 square feet over seven stories. The interior boasts 25 rooms distributed across five levels, marked by high ceilings and large windows that allow ample sunlight to fill the space, highlighting the mansion's grandeur and unique design features. And the Benjamin N. Duke House is a vantage point for breathtaking views of the Metropolitan Museum of Art and Central Park, offering a dynamic vista of New York's cultural heart and natural beauty. Currently on the market for $80 million, this landmark property presents a unique chance to own a part of New York's history. While designated as a landmark and listed on the National Register of Historic Places, since 1989 the future owner has flexibility in its use, with potential conversions into a gallery, store, museum or foundation. Acquired by Carlos Slim in 2010, the mansion's legacy includes a restoration in 1985 and a landmark status bestowed in 1974. Number 5. The J. Pierpont Morgan Library, Murray Hill, New York City. In the dynamic heart of New York City, the J. Pierpont Morgan Library stands as a grand symbol of the affluence and influence of one of America's premier financiers. Designed to showcase J. Pierpont Morgan's extensive collection of rare books and manuscripts, the library is a testament to his ambition to bring Europe's finest cultural artifacts to American shores. Constructed between 1902 and 1906, beside Morgan's Madison Avenue residence, the library is a stunning architectural creation. Under the guidance of Charles F. McKim, the building combines magnificent design with a personal touch, embodying the Renaissance principle of harmonizing the arts. The library's exterior captivates with its classical style, 
simple elegance and rectangular form highlighted by a recessed portico. And inside, the grandeur escalates. The main chamber, the library's crowning glory, is lined with triple tiers of bronze and Circassian walnut bookcases, reaching up to 30 feet. This space houses an exceptional collection of rare books, manuscripts, drawings and prints, and masterpieces by Rembrandt, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci stand alongside a diverse assortment of rare books and manuscripts from around the world. In the 21st century, the J. Pierpont Morgan Library functions as both a museum and a research library, and it welcomes the public to immerse themselves in its historic and artistic wealth through various tours, including the classic library tour. Number four, the Carnegie Mansion, Upper East Side, New York City. In the bustling heart of Manhattan's Upper East Side, the Carnegie Mansion stands not just as a building, but as a grandiose slice of the Gilded Age. Constructed between 1899 and 1902 by the legendarily wealthy Andrew Carnegie, the mansion is a nod to the English Georgian country houses. Spacious, stately, and very posh indeed. Bab, Cook, and Amp, Willard, the design wizards of their time, had a field day with this project, creating an abode with 64 rooms spread over five floors, complete with a dedicated floor for the hard-working servants. And this architectural marvel was Andrew Carnegie's home for two decades, until his demise in 1919. His wife, Louise, kept the mansion's legacy alive until 1946, and post-Louise's era, the Carnegie Corporation took the reins. But in a plot twist, the corporation leased it to Columbia University's School of Social Work in 1949. Fast forward to 1966, the mansion snagged the title of National Historic Landmark, but drama ensued as its fate teetered on the edge of demolition. In a turn of events, as Columbia University bid adieu, the Cooper Union's museum was on the brink of closure. Enter the cavalry, the committee to save the Cooper Union Museum, a group of 260 impassioned souls, ready to fight the good fight. Rescued by the Carnegie Corporation and handed over to the Smithsonian, the mansion was reborn in 2014 as the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum after a stylish makeover. It flaunted an expanded 17,000 square feet of exhibit space, restored teak floors and architectural facelifts, all while keeping its neo-Georgian soul intact. Today, the Cooper Hewitt is a design haven housing an enviable collection of over 200,000 design artifacts. It's a place where the past and the future of design converge, offering digital explorations, interactive galleries, and an immersion room that showcases wall coverings in all their glory. Number three, the Frick Collection, New York City. Also in the upscale enclave of Manhattan's Upper East Side, the Frick Collection elegantly unfolds as a symbol of Henry Clay Frick's fervent love for art. This steel tycoon with an eye for masterpieces commissioned his mansion in 1913, giving the architectural baton to Thomas Hastings of Career and Hastings. Thus, this grand residence was meticulously designed to be a canvas for Frick's vast art collection, boasting luminaries like Vermeer, Rembrandt and Gainsborough, alongside a parade of decorative arts, including furniture, porcelain and clocks. And the Frick Collection's galleries are nothing short of a cultural pilgrimage, each room narrating a different artistic tale. The West Gallery, adorned with works by Vermeer, Rembrandt and Dutch maestros, is a feast for the eyes, while the East Gallery, graced by Gainsborough, Reynolds and British artists, offers a different flavour. The Fragonard Room, draped in Rococo-style paintings, and the Boucher Room, home to Francois Boucher's creations, are amongst the collection's crown jewels. But the true allure of the Frick collection lies in its ability to merge the aura of a private home with an art showcase. The mansion's intimate galleries, with their opulent walls and ceilings, whisk visitors back to the Gilded Age's elite circles. The gardens, a verdant retreat amidst the city's bustle, add to the mansion's charm. While the Frick collection is gearing up for a grand reopening in late 2024 post-renovation, art enthusiasts are invited to the Frick Madison. This temporary sanctuary on Madison Avenue offers a fresh perspective on Frick's collection. Here, a carefully selected array of highlights from the decorative arts collection awaits, complemented by serene gardens and soothing Sunday evening concerts. This interim setup provides a vibrant, enriching way to experience Henry Clay Frick's enduring legacy in a new, engaging environment.
Number 2. Oheka Castle, Long Island, New York Perched in the charming Huntington of Long Island is Oheka Castle, an awe-inspiring monument to the Jazz Age's lavishness. Constructed in 1919, this grandiose edifice was the vision of esteemed financier and philanthropist Otto Hermann Kahn and his wife Addie Wolf. Originally envisioned as a summer haven, the castle is adorned with 127 rooms, each reflecting the extravagant spirit of the era. And the grounds of Oheka Castle are as mesmerizing as the castle itself. These gardens, a creation of the Olmsted brothers, of Central Park's architect Frederick Law Olmsted fame, encase the castle in breathtaking natural splendor. And Oheka Castle has a rich connection with literary history, having reportedly been a source of inspiration for F. Scott Fitzgerald during his time in Long Island alongside Zelda. In the vibrant 1920s, the castle's luxurious setting played host to grand cocktail parties, helping to ignite Fitzgerald's imagination and ultimately influencing his masterpiece, The Great Gatsby. Today, Oheka Castle stands as a luxurious retreat, continuing to allure those drawn to the elegance of the Jazz Age. Transformed into a historic hotel, it offers a stunning venue for various events, including lavish weddings and grand galas. Number 1. Lyndhurst Mansion, Tarrytown, New York In the charming town of Tarrytown, New York, the Lyndhurst Mansion emerges as a highlight of architectural brilliance. The mansion, a Gothic revival gem, was conceived in 1838 by William Paulding Jr., who tapped Alexander Jackson Davis for the task. Its interiors boast a captivating arrangement of Gothic elements, stained glass, vaulted ceilings and marble floors, presenting an array of artistic delights. And the mansion's rich history is woven through its series of notable inhabitants. Among them were George Merritt, a merchant of notable affluence, and Jay Gould, a Wall Street mogul of repute. Gould's era is of particular interest, marking the mansion with lavishness. It showcased furniture by the Herter brothers, Tiffany windows, and paintings sourced from the renowned Nodler Gallery, echoing the Gilded Age's luxury. Gould's daughter later added her touch, infusing modernity with electricity and renovated bathrooms. These days, Lyndhurst Mansion opens its doors to the public, offering a peek into its historical and artistic significance through various tours and events. The classic mansion tour is a highlight, allowing visitors to delve into its art collections. Beyond this, Lyndhurst is a bustling center of cultural activities, with lectures, workshops, and family programs aimed at fostering a deep appreciation for art and design. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. Which of these must-see old money mansions is your favorite? In other words, which one do you find to be the most tastefully designed and timeless? We look forward to hearing from you. And if you enjoyed this, why not click the video on screen to watch our top 10 must-see old money mansions in Massachusetts. We'll see you there, or in the community below. Thanks again for watching and cheers until next time.